We have something a bit different for you today. This is a cooler from Height. This is a 240 mil cooler, which is cold, thick. Well, its actual model number is Q60. It's 240 mil with a thicker than normal radiator. The radiator it has is actually 52 millimeters thick. And it also comes with a 32 millimeter fans, which makes the whole thing almost double the width of a normal radiator fan combo. And it also comes with a five inch screen where you can display your memes or whatnot. This is a more premium cooler. This one retails for about 300 US dollars. But on the flip side, Height is giving you a six year warranty. Let's open up and see what we're going inside the box. The box itself is very reminiscent of a shoe box to me, especially how it opens and how it's kind of packaged. Inside we have actually nice built cardboard, double thickness in some ways. That also almost looks like wood. We've got a bunch of accessories. So this is accessory pack. So AMD kit and Intel kit. Then we have that screen with the cooler. Just get the whole thing out. Oh Jesus, that is thick and heavy. Wow, that's really heavy. So here we have the actual cooling plate and we have the screen itself. So the screen is in a nicely covered box. I can see that they've put a lot of effort into designing this packaging because it's all very custom and nicely protected. We even have a little Velcro covered uh, tube protectors. Uh, a huge manual in a whole stack of languages. Well, that's a lot of languages. It's got pictures. That's good. We can use that later. Let's move that to the side. And now the actual star of the show is the radius. Jesus Christ. Okay. This is super heavy. It does look quite clean. I like that. And the fans themselves are interconnected with a little, uh, I believe they use USB-C connector in between them. They call them the Nexus Link. So that's gonna be kind of cool. And then you have the connections here. So this is the connections from the fans over to your PC. So you have a power connection, uh, you have the fan connection, and also USB connection. So this USB will be for the controlling board it was on screen and whatnot. That cable connected to this slot here. So you literally just go and plug in like this. That's very slick. That's actually really nicely thought through. And I really like that it's type C connections, not some weird proprietary cables. Uh, well, technically speaking, this is a proprietary cable still, but the connectors themselves, they're very really solid. I like that. We're gonna set, up, set this up in a build. So we're actually gonna be doing a very funky build where we're using a frame from Inwin, which is actually specifically designed for being a, for coolers. That's not what most people would be doing. In most cases, something like this thick may actually not fit. And this is one of the biggest problems for this kind of design, compatibility. Compatibility in terms of having a 240 mil radiator normally is not a problem. But the problem normally happens when you talk about thickness. So most fish tank cases are kind of designed for this. They kind of work for it and you can actually use it easily. And this is what Height was building this for. They actually built it for their own fish tank style case where this fits in perfectly. But when it comes down to the general public, most cases don't have that much thickness. You normally would have a 240 mil radiator space at the top but it only normally accounts for a standard fan, not even this thick, I think, for a normal fan and a standard radiator. And then what happens is you'll be basically hitting the top of the motherboard where the power connectors are. With normal cases, something as thick as this will be basically touching your VRMs, or in fact, it might be halfway through them. So you need to make sure that the case you want to use this in is actually compatible. So that kind of limits what this can work in, but what you do get with that is a lot more surface area. And that's kind of the beauty of these thick radiators. Rather than making a very large radiator, like a 360 mil radiator, you can have 280, but with actually more space, physical space for the air to go through, or for the liquid to go through in the radiator and the air to blow past it to dissipate that heat. So I'm really curious to see what this performance is gonna be like. But first we need to install inside the build and see how we can set it up. 
and I'll have a few feedback points at the end to talk about what the performance is and what was it like to install it. After setting up the Hyde Q60 in our build, I have plenty of thoughts on how it performs, the features it brings and where it could use some improvements. Let's dive into the positives first, as there is a lot to cover here. One of the standout features is the screen. It's bright and adjustable within the settings tab. With the high resolution that makes everything from the performance metrics to custom widgets look sharp and detailed, the screen can display clocks, performance stats, weather and even media playing on your system. It also has screen time metrics for your apps, which is a great touch for those needing a reminder to limit their gaming or other app usage. The customization options also are very impressive. You can tweak everything from the look of the widgets and backgrounds to the RGB lighting, which also offers presets and custom settings. This is perfect for those wanting to match their build aesthetic. Another big plus is the fan and pump control. Unlike most setups that rely solely on temperature metrics, the Q60 gives you options to base cooling adjustments on different metrics such as CPU or GPU load, power, temperatures and so on, which sometimes make more sense depending on your workload. Plus, the addition of the in and out water temperature sensors for the pump adds useful layer of monitoring. The app itself is feature rich and practical. You can add and remove widgets, making it not just control interface, but also true monitoring hub. If you also have the Y70 Touch, the integration within the same app streamlines control across devices. As such, I really enjoyed the build and testing experience. There are also some noticeable downsides. First, the screen orientation is limited. It can only be installed in a vertical orientation with no real adjustment options besides the 45 degree turns. On top of that, there seems to be no software option to flip the screen, a feature that will be really handy for those with different mounting setups. Hopefully, this is something that Hyde can address in future updates, or is it something that I was just not able to find? During testing, I also encountered a more critical issue. While running Prime95, the PC naturally began to lag, which caused the connection to the control unit to drop. As a result, the fan speed settings configured in the software stopped functioning and the fans reverted to the internal speed profile. This default profile initially set the fans to 2200 RPM but gradually increased their speed further. While this did not cause any thermal problems due to the effectiveness of the default fan curve, the issue occurred multiple times. In my mind, this raises some concerns, as I would expect a device of this price point to save the settings to its internal memory and continue operating independently of the software. Now, onto some of the results. We've tested this in a few different configuration setups. For those running with low power TPUs, this cooler will be basically whisper quiet and cool your CPU with no issues at all. So, I will focus on the higher wattage scenarios. In our high load Prime95 test with noise normalized settings set to 40 dBA, we found that it hit 95 degrees, which is a TJ Max for this chip, but it was also able to hold about 4.9 GHz on all cores for a long while, and then slowly dropped to 4.6 towards the end. This is very similar to the 100% fan speed, which is just marginally better. But let me tell you, it sounds like an industrial machinery as it hits over 60 dBA as the fans are running at 3100 RPM, and I'd probably not want to be in the same room for an extended period of time. But hey, it can hold the temperature really well. It is a bit clearer to see it in the power graph. You can see that noise normal test is slowly down clocking, while the 100% speed is staying still. With this in mind, I'm actually pretty impressed with the coolest performance, and how quiet it remains under normal operating conditions. Sure, if you push it to the limit, it can get loud, but for most users that level of cooling power is not necessary. The sheer size of this radiator allows it to handle CPU spikes effortlessly, soaking up the heat with ease. If you're in the market for an AO cooler with a built-in screen and can work around the screen orientation limitations, provided your case can accommodate its size, it is a solid option. However, it's worth noting that these considerations add up, especially for a premium device like this. What do you think? Is this cooler worth the trade-offs? Let us know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. If you think that this cooler might be what you need, check out the link below for more details. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more. 
We'll see you in the next one.